What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2020 Ford Explorer ST. Huge thanks to Ford for providing us with this very sweet Explorer ST to review for you guys today. Also, huge thanks to the Automotive Video Association for arranging this vehicle and seven others for our third annual Automotive Video Awards, where we decide what is the best performance car and performance SUV of the year. So about the Explorer, well, they're all new for 2020 here, all of them. And so the ST is a new addition to the Explorer lineup here. Um, but all Explorers get this really nice redo here. It's on a completely new platform. Uh, it's on a wheelbase that's over six inches longer. And uh, it's also, of course, got a restyle as well. And so, uh, especially on the ST here, I like the black accents. It really looks mean up front there. I love the blacked out grill, the blacked out Explorer script. And, um, you know, it's a very handsome look. I think it's a, a look that will age very well and I think it's, you know, it's evolutionary. They didn't drastically change the styling or try and go in too wild of a direction, but I appreciate that. I think it looks really handsome up front. I love the way that looks there. And even the ST badge is fairly small and pretty tasteful, so I appreciate that. Coming down to the sides here, these are the optional 21-inch wheels, and these ones are on all-season tires, but you can actually get a summer tire option on the Explorer ST if you want, and so you can have even better grip than you get here with these all-seasons. But I think all-seasons, of course, for an SUV make a lot of sense, so good that they of course have the option uh, otherwise though i also really love the proportions going down to the side of the new explorer here the hood just looks a little longer and so it gives you this very nice shape i also like um, all the lines you have going through the doors and stuff it just looks very good from just about every angle out back i think is where it looks the most like the old explorer you know they have very slight changes to the taillights um, and the overall shape there in the back is a little flatter and a little less rounded than before um, and it looks good still i just i think i wish there was a little bit more differentiation between the old explorer and the new one here on the back end um, but otherwise it still looks good and here in the st you get the quad exhaust tips which look nice and uh, overall still a nice looking back end here all right, so the interior of the Explorer ST. Well, it has some good parts and some bad parts, uh, in my opinion. So, uh, first thing, you know, it's completely all new here, and it's a really interesting redesign here. Uh, you can see, obviously, like this large 10.1 inch uh, vertical screen and a few other things. But anyway, first thing, sitting down in these seats, you have these very nice, soft, comfortable ST seats that, uh, you know, don't have too aggressive of a bolstering. Still very soft, comfortable seats. And uh, this one does have the optional massage seats, which is part of, I think, a premium technology package and um, they work pretty nicely it's not quite as uh, I guess advanced as some of the luxury brands and their massage but it still does feel very nice they're also heated and ventilated seats here in the ST version which is great next is the steering wheel here in the ST which is a very chunky wheel so it does taper down a little bit at the 9 and 3 grip but uh, my other fingers here when I do a 9 and 3 grip are kind of uh, stretched out a little bit it's a very large uh, chunky 9 and 3 grip not in love with that I wish it was a little thinner there you also have massive tendencies two notches I can barely even get my hands all the way around um, and then a flat bottom which uh, looks fine I have no problem with that the buttons aren't uh, the nicest uh, looking buttons they feel a little cheap and there's a decent amount of them but uh, right in line with most other vehicles these days so I uh, can't criticize that too much the paddles on the back here are plastic and feel kind of cheap unfortunately as well and so uh, you know I do like the leather and stuff it feels nice I uh, just wish it was a little thinner and that some of the buttons felt a little nicer Gauges here in the Explorer ST are digital and look very cool. The graphics and everything are very slick uh, whenever they're turning on and stuff. Um, and so there's a couple of interesting things about them though. The way they set them up, as you can see here in normal mode, it doesn't actually have the traditional dial. So you have the tack on the left-hand side there alongside the speedometer. And on the right-hand side, you have this massive display and then there's very few things you can even show there. It's like your trip information, just basic things like that. You know, it would have been nice if they had a map or some large display there, but you don't have any of that. It's just this giant wasted space, in my opinion. Um, and it's kind of strange. At least make the tack bigger if you're not going to use that right side. Uh, I don't know. It's just not in love with that. And so the only way to go in and actually get a normal set of round dials is to go into the sport mode. And then you have your traditional dials the way they're usually set up. And so that does look very nice. But one thing you might notice because I'm I haven't sped up or slowed down this footage as I'm scrolling through the drive modes and trying to get to all this stuff it's all very laggy I think um, they didn't have enough processing power or something whenever they uh, put all these nice animations and stuff in and so it looks very pretty but it just all goes a little slow even transitioning through the different options and stuff is uh, you know I press the button and then I have to wait a split second it's doing it all pretty slowly um, and so especially when you're driving if you're changing stuff in these gauges like you don't want to have a three second lag in between switching the views and stuff whenever you're looking at your speed and your attack and all that kind of stuff 
So I think that definitely could use a speed boost. And it's strange because in like the Lincolns that have this digital gauge cluster, uh, those have no speed issues that I noticed in the Navigator and stuff like that. So um, not sure why this is slow here, but um, you know, it is nice you have the different modes and the different looks for them. It all looks very pretty. I just think it's weird the way the normal mode's set up and I just wish it was a little faster. Coming over to the center of the dashboard here, right uh, front and center you have this 10.1 inch display. Now that is also optional, so you don't have to get that. That's part of this premium technology package. You can uh, instead get the normal eight inch screen like you see in other Fords. And uh, that is uh, you know, a nice alternative for people who think this is a little odd because I know there was some backlash when this first came out. I personally don't mind it. I think it looks okay. Um, but my only gripe with it is that it also, again, is a little slow. Even basic things like tra changing the radio station, when I go into that, and I'm scrolling through, it's like I'm swiping and it's going so slow. Like it's, it's really strange, honestly, because it's, it's been a couple of years since I've encountered an infotainment system that's laggy like this, honestly. And so um, that's a little bit of a disappointment because otherwise it looks nice. I like the way that it's set up and Sync 3 as a software is really great. I've never had any complaints with it. It's usually pretty snappy. The eight inch screen in like my Mustang, for example, is very quick. And so for this to be slow actually caught me off guard. I was really surprised that it is, it is a little laggy like that. And so, for example, with going through the, uh, you know, the tuning, the radio station and stuff, you do have a volume and a tune knob, but even that when you use the tune knob, it still goes slow. So it's just a software issue, I guess, or processing, I don't know. But other things there, you know, it's all nicely set up in traditional Sync 3 style and very easy to navigate. I do love the way everything is set up. Again, just wish it was a little bit quicker. Coming down, you have your climate controls here. Just a few buttons, and I do like these little levers and the design of all this looks pretty nice. And so I like that they've kept it nice and simple. But one thing I have to say while we're in this area is the materials. Um, this one, so Explorer ST started around 55,000, and uh, this one, as tested, is around 60. And I mean, all the, the plastic around here is hard, kind of rough, just cheap feeling plastic. And I could see, okay, if we're in a $30,000 Explorer, you know, not a big deal. But in this, I get that you're paying for the performance primarily, but still it would be nice to put a little bit of a padding around some of this stuff. Other things though, you know, you have like your rotary shifter here, which feels nice. Has this, it's plastic, I believe, but has a look, a, you know, look of metal and feels kind of like metal as well. Same goes for the drive mode selector here. As far as storage space goes here, so while we're in the center area here, you have this area that lifts up this little lid and then you'll see a pretty deep deep uh, cubby there. That's really nicely done. And you'll also see a USB-C jack, a normal USB jack, and then you also have a traditional power outlet in there. So great to have all that. Although this lid also does feel a little cheap to me, um, but you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna just move on from that. Other things, you have two cup holders here, as well as a little slot for the key in front of it. In the doors, you have a huge pocket with a pretty large bottle holder, so that's really nice. Coming back here, you have in, in the center, uh, this wireless charging pad, which is a nice thing that I think think comes with the ST. And then you have this uh, center armrest, which is very nice and softly padded. Feels great for resting your elbow on. And you open that up and then you'll see this little tray on the top and then you'll see uh, you can remove that um, and then get down to the lower portion here, which you can see is very wide open, very large. And you'll also see another power outlet in there. So that's great to have, but you'll see it's actually a very narrow opening. And so trying to get my hand through there is, uh, you know, to get stuff in here isn't the easiest because you only have vision of half of that. And also the edge Edge for this removable tray is actually sharp like it actually hurts if you scrape so you have this very narrow opening and if you don't go through it perfectly then you're gonna be scraping your wrist up against this very sharp plastic I'm honestly surprised I hope they change that and this is just a pre-production one or something but that is a very sharp edge on this removable tray not a good combo there especially if you're driving and trying to shove your hand in here to grab something you're gonna be having a forearm that's all kinds of uh, scraped up so not a great design there honestly but um, hopefully that's something that change otherwise maybe put a little piece of felt or something around there yourself backseat here in the explorer st is very good so you know with a six inch longer wheelbase this is really where you reap the benefits is in the second and third rows so first off that second row uh you have those nice captain's chairs here you can also get a bench here in the explorers and uh when you look forward you'll see your own climate controls as well as another usb jack another usb c jack and also a traditional plug down there and another little bin underneath of that and then in the doors you also have uh pockets with a bottle hole 
holder and also another little cup holder at the top of the door there, which is a really nice feature. And then looking in between those caps and stairs, you'll see two cup holders and a bunch of bins there. And I like that it's nice and low, so it's easy to step over so you can walk through that second row into the third row through the middle there if you'd like. But it is also nice because uh, you, there's a button on the top of the second row seats and that automatically powers them forward. And so it's very easy to get into that third row, even for kids and stuff. They just hit that button and it springs forward. And that's uh, a great feature that I think Honda started, Kia and Hyundai also do. And now I'm glad that Ford has jumped on that bandwagon. Instead of having a heavy lever or something to sling the seat forward, I like having the button. That's great. Um, and anyway, so then going into that third row there, it's a good amount of space. They did a really great job. So now with the second row of seats, obviously you have plenty of room um, in either configuration. I'm five foot nine, me sitting behind myself. And in the second row with the seat all the way back, I have tons of space. With the seat all the way forward, I still have a little bit of space there. Um, you know, not much, but you know, enough that I'm not banging my knees against the seat back. And so in that third row, when you're sitting behind the second row, if the second row is slid all the way forward, then I have tons of space, probably like three inches to spare, plenty of space. Um, but if the seat in the second row is pushed all the way back, then again, being five foot nine, my uh, right leg is actually kind of squished up against that seat back a little bit, not too hard. So I could sit back there for a little while without complaining too much. And then my left leg, you know, I can kind of uh, have in the middle there. So not a big issue with that. Um, but I will say that that uh, third row, the seat bottom is actually kind of thin and it looks pretty padded when you push down on it, but when you sit on it, it's kind of firm and just not a lot of padding. It's just like a very flat bench there, no contour or anything. And so uh, the third row occupants definitely have the worst seat in the house as far as comfort goes, but they do have plenty of headroom. So again, being 5'9", I have several inches of headroom to spare. And I think that's why they made that third row bottom cushion so thin so that you have a ton of headroom there. And I get that, but uh, just doesn't make for a very comfortable third row in that regard. Um, but they do have, you know, the cup holders and little bins and stuff back there. So good to have all that in the third row. And uh, so overall, I mean, you can still definitely transport uh, in this configuration six people very comfortably or seven if you get the bench. And um, so definitely an improvement over the old Explorer for sure. Trunk space here in the Explorer ST is pretty good. So that's another thing that's been improved. And I do like the way that, uh, you know, you can see there, it's a fairly uh, shallow load floor. Um, and so that's mostly, you obviously have the pockets there on the sides, but that's mostly because underneath that floor, you lift it up and you will see a nice large area there. And you can fit some really large items, even like grocery bags and stuff that aren't too tall will fit in there. So, I mean, it really kind of almost doubles your space in a way and gives you a nice little, uh, tr you know, kind of trunk within a trunk, which I really appreciate. Then, so the seats are the third row is power here in the Explorer ST. So you just press those and those seats go down. And then if you don't need that third row, then you have a ton of space there. Um, and it makes it much roomier, of course, if you only need a two row SUV. And uh, I will say though, it still isn't super deep, it, it seems to me. You know, it doesn't uh, have a ton of height to it, but still should be very competitive with everything else in this class. All right, so sort of go for a drive. The Explorer ST here has a nice ST branded key, which is kind of cool. And the metal buttons there on the back, very similar to other Ford keys, a very nice key though, for sure. But of course this keyless access, keyless entry and push button starts. You just leave the key in your pocket, hit the engine start button and it starts right up. All right, so setting off here in the Explorer ST. So first thing you notice, well, you have a very good view of the road here, pretty good visibility, honestly, a pretty thin A-pillar, uh, very easy to see around the mirror. And then view out of the back is also pretty good. If the headrests are up, it's not the best, but uh, still not too bad. So no complaints there. And it's a pretty easy vehicle to drive, you know, just cruising along at some low speeds here. The roads are a little bit rougher and um, going over a couple of bumps. It is a tad bit firmer than a normal Explorer because the ST here has stiffer springs and dampers, thicker sway bars and also heavier steering as well that helps to you know make it a little bit sportier in its setup which i'm sure we'll appreciate once we're on a curvy back road but just cruising around at low speeds here um it doesn't feel you know like it's uncomfortably stiff or anything like that we'll have to of course have to drive around a little bit more to get a better feel for that other things here though pretty good throttle response you know as soon as you tip in you start getting some response from the engine and brakes also really get start to bite right at the top of the pedal so i really like the way that's set up it feels very responsive without being too abrupt or anything and so i appreciate that about it and uh you know it's also pretty quiet and refined in here but i put it up into the sport mode here and let's turn down onto this straight road and see how it does and here we go wow okay great response and then it hauls 
it pulls very nicely. So that's that was really well done. So the Explorer ST here runs the three liter EcoBoost twin turbo V6 engine. It has 400 horsepower and 415 pound feet of torque. And it'll do zero to 60 in about 5.2 seconds. So very strong performance here, especially considering this vehicle weighs uh, about 4,800 pounds. I think it's like 4,853 actually. And so, it does a good job, and this 10-speed automatic that it's running also does a very good job of giving you a good response, especially here in sport mode. And so, it likes, you know, holds gears and does a good job. We'll try the manual mode here, see how that does. Pretty quick, so uh, if you watched my 10-speed automatic review of the Ford Mustang GT last year, this is uh, basically, you know, very similar to the, that transmission, very similar setup. And so, downshifts and, and upshifts are both pretty quick and uh, and it holds gears in manual mode sometimes you know other vehicles have a mind of its own but this it's holding gears and has a good sound to it as well I think it's definitely being helped out by the speakers but it sounds pretty good so and if this engine uh, output sounds familiar that's also because it's basically the Lincoln uh, engine the Lincoln you know, EcoBoost V6 which does identical power figures so they basically just through the Lincoln engine in this and then you know stiffened up everything give it a sportier handling feel and that's how they came up with the ST here so obviously you know there is some debate as to whether or not uh, you know having an ST badge on an SUV is appropriate um, that's a subjective thing so I you know won't weigh in on that too much um, but I will say that you know if they would have kept this as an Explorer Sport that also would have totally fit I think like they used to do with previous uh, generations of the Explorer uh, but anyway, so, you know, in sport mode here, even whenever I'm out of manual mode, it still wants to hang out in the higher RPM. So sport mode isn't something I would probably sit in for too long if you care about your fuel economy. Um, but it does give you a very nice response whenever you are in it. But we'll go ahead and go over uh, to the drive modes again. And this, this gauge cluster is way too slow, though. The more that I use it trying to switch over to different modes, um, I keep wanting it to be quicker. Now, it does always show me my speed even when I'm changing modes. So that is good. I'm glad that it does that. Uh, but still just is a little bit too distracting. I want to just have it instantly change like it does in every other vehicle that has that type of a setup. You want to do another acceleration here in normal mode. really strongly this this motor is is definitely a muscly motor that's for sure it feels great and brakes also feel good now this one has uh, the street performance package I think is what it's called and so you have slightly bigger brakes I believe they're actually the brakes off of the police interceptor version of the Explorer and um, so they haul you down very nicely again for a vehicle that weighs this heavy these brakes make it feel a lot lighter than it actually is and so it does a really good job um, but now you know just cruising behind traffic here in normal mode it's a very nice cruising vehicle. It's, uh, you know, like I said, pretty comfortable here, even though you do have the stiffer suspension of the ST. I don't think there's any adjustability in the suspension or anything. Uh, I don't think it's quite that advanced, but still, you know, feels good even on these rougher roads that we're on here. Uh, totally daily drivable, it's totally very, very comfortable. But anyway, I'm gonna hit some back roads and see how it does there. With this 10 speed, I mean, this car really explodes uh, whenever you floor the gas. I mean, it is just crazy. With 10 gears in it, you can have such short ratios that really makes just about any car rip, and especially when you get 400 horsepower. Uh, I mean, it really, really makes it impressive. So, of course, all STs here have an all wheel drive system, and so that helps to keep this firmly planted. Uh, but as we're going around some corners here, see how it handles roads are a tiny bit damp but it's still doing pretty good so again like I said we got all season tires 275 wide all around here on the Explorer ST and it feels pretty buttoned down but does feel a little weighty still maybe a little more wallowy I guess is the word than I would want it to uh, it still handles itself pretty well but uh, you know just not quite as light as some other competitors but I think you know for the class of vehicle and you know three rows and all that kind of stuff uh, they're all gonna feel pretty weighty the Durango SRT also feels pretty heavy too. 
but I will say that the balance here is better in the new Explorer. So of course you have that six inch longer wheelbase, which is going to help spread things out and give you a little bit more of a stable feel than the old Explorer. The old Explorer did not handle well, that is for sure. So this is definitely an improvement in every single way, basically. And also you have better weight distribution now. I think it was like 54% in the front in the old Explorer. Now I think it's 51% of the weight is in the front. So a little bit uh, better feeling. Still, you definitely feel the weight in the corners though. I mean, you know, that shouldn't come as a surprise, but I was hoping it would maybe feel a little bit more athletic than it does, honestly. But it still feels, you know, pretty good overall. And I gotta say, this engine is really the, the headline thing here because even going up this mountain road, these hills and stuff. I mean, this thing has no problems accelerating up these hills. Uh, so the engine is definitely my favorite part of the Explorer ST, I think. And it's really impressing me just how loud the engine sound is. Again, that's mostly piped in, but it really uh, gives you a very sporty feeling, especially here in the sport mode. Uh, but speaking of the stereos, if you don't want to listen to the engine, you just, you know, relax, then you can also listen to this B&O Play stereo, which is a 14 speaker system. It actually sounds really good. Even listening to the satellite radio, it's a really powerful, really nice and bassy sound to it. And uh, so that's a very nice thing that I believe you also get as part of that premium technology package uh, and would definitely be worth the money. I think that package really gives you a lot of good stuff, the massage seats, the stereo, uh, the bigger screen, all that kind of stuff. So this engine is very strong um, and you know I think if you took it easy you get pretty good fuel economy. Uh, you know the EPA rates it at 18 in the city, 24 on the highway and 20 combined. Uh, but uh, so far with all of us journalists been, that have been driving this vehicle on this AVA event, uh, our average MPG, I'm not sure when it was reset, I haven't touched it, but it's been at 13.6 for our average MPG. I'm certainly not helping that number with my throttle heavy applications here but uh, you know just you know usually especially with you know any turbocharged engine but these EcoBoost engines in particular can get thirsty if you lean on that boost because they're such strong engines but uh, you definitely uh, will pay that with fuel economy and the last thing to mention here about the Explorer ST is the pricing of it so these start around fifty five thousand dollars this one as tested is closer to sixty um, and so you know this does come pretty loaded up the STs you know you get heated and cooled seats as standard leather of course all those types of things so you're already starting with a fairly loaded Explorer to begin with and then you add the power and all the extra cost of all those types of things and that's how you kind of arrive at that $55,000 starting price and then all the nice options I mentioned earlier you know we'll bump that up to around 60 or over 60 depending on how many options you want to add on and um, you know I'm just I'm grateful that they did a sporty version of this because they didn't have to even though sporty crossovers are pretty hot you know that's usually something that the luxury manufacturers do and um, you know and that's one thing is the, it really depends on how much power you want and stuff uh, but there's some stuff that has less power that's pretty close to as fast in a straight line stuff like the Acura RDX from an actual luxury brand starts well under 55 I mean those I think you can get a nice a spec version of an RDX for about 48 you know has a lot of nicer materials and stuff than what you get again at 55,000 the hard plastic in this is kind of unexcusable in my opinion um, even you know Mustangs seem to have more soft touch materials these days uh, at their you know thirty thousand dollar price tags so that is something I wish was improved this engine is very strong and I do love it but uh, you know the Durango SRT still does exist and those are only a couple thousand dollars more and for that couple thousand dollars extra you still get a wonderfully sweet and actually naturally good sounding V8 engine that still just rips and actually gives you a lot more power 75 more horsepower and about 55 more pound-feet of torque than what you get here in the Explorer ST and so you pay a few thousand more but you do get way more power and in my opinion a much better sound and so I think that still is the biggest problem for the Explorer ST even despite the fact that the Durango is pretty ancient at this point they've kept it fresh and with that SRT version it is fantastic fun and um, so I, I still think that would be my pick between these two but like I said I'm glad they still have this I think the tech and stuff in this is obviously uh, a little bit more advanced than obviously what you can get in the Durango you can't get mass massage seats in the Durango or this huge screen or anything like that digital gauges so if you like all those toys then you know the Explorer is going to win out for sure in that regard you're getting in luxury territory with this and well into luxury territory with this vehicle and so that is also another thing that's a struggle is just how much do you need that extra performance versus having a much more luxurious vehicle with many of the competitors so anyway huge thanks to Ford for providing me with the Explorer ST to review for you guys today let me know your thoughts on the Explorer ST in the comments below thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one take care